सर लाइव फीड पर चालू हो गया प्रशांत हेलो यस सर ओके आगे का स्लाइड कैसा है ओके 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 नहीं नहीं आई आई स्टार्टेड प्रेजेंटिंग ओके गुड आफ्टरनून डॉक्टर गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रॉम ऑल अदर द पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया दिस इज अनंग मोहन बसु स्पीकिंग फ्रॉम एफडीसी एंड आई एम प्रिविलेज टुडे टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर डी जी सापले सो ही इज गोइंग टू बी हियर टुडे एंड टेक इज take us to recalcitrant dermatophytosis the most important chapter what you have been facing today in day to day practice 
So let me take the privilege of introducing Dr. Professor D.J. Safle. First of all, I want to tell you that he is the probably world's first doctor who have started using daily 150 milligram of fluconazole based on his years experience of HIV. Dr. D.J. Safle is also fellow of prestigious John Hopkins University in the USA. He is ex-president and ex-president of IADVL Maharashtra. He, is, he, he has serviced Grand Medical College, which is the prestigious medical college of Mumbai, as a professor in the HOD of Department of Dermatology. He is a consultant in most prestigious hospitals in Bombay, like Bridge Candy, Bombay Port Hospital, Asian Heart, as well as RL Raheja Hospital. So most of, most of his experience is in, in the field of HIV. He is also known as father of HIV in India. He has extensively worked for HIV treatment in India. And now last five years when he saw that fungal infection has also become a burden in the field of dermatology and mineralogy, he has started aggressively practicing in the field of Dermatophytosis. Now it is my pleasure to introduce you one of the finest teacher and one of the best practitioners in the field of dermatology, Professor Dr. D.G. Saple. Over to you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Anand. Thank you for nice introduction. Dear friends, today we are going to discuss the real problem of dermatophytosis, which is not the nightmare of the patient, but it's a nightmare of all of us, whether you are a family practitioner or dermatologist. So we are going to discuss what are the problems and is there any solution? If there any solution, what is the solution? So I'm working in this field for the last about five years and definitely we have solution. That's why We'll discuss today because always when discussing we learn from each other. So I'll request Shailendra, please go go ahead for the slide. Yeah, this is I was head of the department. Then main my practice is still HIV practice. Then I got involved in cosmetology, then hair transplant, and last five years only on relapse or recurring or recalcitrant fungal infection. Next slide, please. So in this, the, this lecture today are going to include the changing scenario of dermatophytosis, CAS-22 situation where we know it, but we do not have answer. Any change in the species, in the change in the epidemiology, if there is something called a resistance or something else, is an acute infection or chronic infection, impact of steroid. So there are many factors I'm going to involve. So we'll go ahead Shalendra, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. So there is exponential rise of dermatophytosis. If you ask me, I used to see 10 to 15 cases in a month in my dermatology clinic. But today, I'm seeing almost 10 cases in a day. This is not happening with me. This is happening with all of us. So suddenly, there is a change. But of course, the change is occurring for the last five to seven years. So why this is exponential rise? Next slide, please. So for they have given many reasons. One of them is the global warming, high humidity, lifestyle, ophthalmology clothing, diabetes mellitus, obesity, so many things. But according to dermatology, is steroid abuse. Everybody, every patient, they get any skin problem, they apply steroid. The itching goes up, they feel better, they get added. So use of steroid is one of the things according to the dermatologist. But according to me, if you go to world literature, there are many more causes. Of course, steroid is one of the important causes. Next slide, please. So before going for that, I would like to give a little bit idea. These dermatophytes, either they come from the soil like gardeners, that is called geophilic. Animals like a dog, cat, monkey, 
those are zoophilic anthrophilic human being to hemophilic uh, from human being to hemophilic uh, that's then microscopically they are divided according to their structure is a trichophyton microsporum or epidermophyton x like this so these are the classification but what happens actually in the clinical there is a recurrence there is a relapse higher frequency extensive lesions unusual atypical aggressive large lesions chronic nature of the infection intractable itching even itching persists even the lesions uh, resolve rapid spread the close contact family many family members are affected it is seen in the children and mother it is seen in immunocompromisation and sometimes the pigment itching the remain for long so all these are atypical presentation of pneumonia we never used to see 6 or 7 years back next slide please so the, these are the pictures you have seen you people must be also seeing in your clinic this looks like almost like a eczema next one yeah this is unusual site on the face concentric lesions on the foot you can see this concentric lesion next one yeah see if you see this pubic it almost look like a map of india and large lesions layer after layer and the concentric rings there are we hardly to see this type of extensive or the large lesions next one yeah this is called steroid abuse they keep on apply steroid and they get dry they get a thick a thinning of the skin excoriation and next one is can be mistaken for the contact dermatitis due to chappal or footwear and there's mother to child next one so these are the clinical pictures all of you are seeing then we started working with the mycologist and our surprise the mycologist said sir it is not change only the clinical presentation but mycologically also we have started seeing abundant mycelia we never used to see that next slide please and the uh, uh, and the species which were confined to the animals now we are start testing in the human being like they say corona we are hearing every day it has come from animal to human being the same thing is happening in the fungus that the fungus is very common in animals now they are coming the human being that is also new change next slide please so what are the challenges we are facing in this recalcitrant dermatosis please go ahead yeah go ahead go ahead what is called is a catch 22 situation delayed response or no response or there is partial response large number of patient from one family the socio economic group the cost become the problem lifestyle that is tight clothing lack of both adherence and the compliance chronic nature lack of counseling side effects drug drug interaction now many people are living living more than 70 when they are living more than 70 they are having a renal problem cardiac problem a, a cardiac problem renal problem or any other like malignancy so already they are on multiple drugs when there are multiple drugs if you add anti fungal drugs more than two there will be lot of drug drug interaction so all these factors we have to take in consideration so we need a solution for this next one next slide please so we started working with the mycologists from hyderabad from chennai and from mumbai and whether the change this is happening because the change in the epidemiology or change in the species next one and after that this this is the information from chennai they say t rubrum is common but t mentagrophytes on the rise so this is the data from chennai next one next one yeah this is the data across the country where certain parts t rubrum is common many parts t mentagrophytes is there. next one but if we go for the global next one yeah global information skill 
trichophotum rootworm which is common and there are many more papers are coming in india they say t metabolites is on rise so we dr mishki and dr madhu and dr anupama who started working next one they are mycologists next one yeah please go next and what we found whatever the people were talking about their new species they are not new species they are sub species of dermatophytes like trichophyton interdigitalis is not a new species is is a sub species of trichophyton mentagorophy like that then there is another study by ananta kurana from delhi she has done the molecular biology pca and found that the space, there are sub species there is no change in the species next slide next slide so they found there is no change in the species whether it is the trichophyton micro trichophyton interdigitalis trichophyton robishanki these are the sub species there is a new species next one next next slide please yeah and yeah so and then if there is no new species the species are same then what is the problem that everybody was talking about resistance 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 everybody was talking so we started getting the literature and started studying next one and see what is happening so the first thing we should know what is resistance because many times our clinicians unknowingly they use this term very loosely or they are casual so i thought first we should make it very clear what is resistance and is there so once you call resistance the organisms are not remain sensitive to that anti microbial for example you take a example a mdr tb the organisms are resistant or they are not sensitive to the pampicin and isoniazide you increase any concentration of rifampicin is from 450 make it 1000 make it 2000 organisms are not going to respond that is called resistance but in our clinical practice you must have notice when the patient of fungal infection comes to your clinic you start anti fungal treatment patient will say abhi acha tha do din acha tha ek do hafta acha tha wapas aa gaya that means patients were responding if the patient were responding that indicates is not resistant it is called clinical failure this terminology is coined by me and dr maniar during in 92 93 for treating hiv patient because there were some of the patient of hiv they were not responding to fluconazole but when you start increase their cd4 same doses they were responding so that is called clinical failure next slide so now we know what is resistance and what is clinical failure next to find out resistance we need a test like he says staphylococci are resistant that means there is interpretive breakpoints for this there is no test we can say there is interpretive breakpoint at this concentration the fungus has become resistant in fact what are the tests are avail available for the fungus these are called micro dilution technique where you increase the concentration like your usual term of been 250 instead of 250 we use 500 the patient will start responding so they are responding because increasing concentration so this is not resistant this is clinical failure next one so we are defined what is clinical failure even there are a lot of article in dermatology what you call is a clinical failure or unresponsive dermatosis so then we say let us go to the basic like when you are studying our medical curriculum what we learn the response to any infection depends upon 
see the top virulence of the organism so now we saw the organism there is no change potency of the drug if you see right side and we have a very potent drug like terbinafine ketraconazole fluconazole they are very potent drug so there, there is no change in the virulence and the or, uh, and we have a potent drugs then why are not getting response and there is a third factor called the host immunity and environment so probably according to me in general our host immunity has gone down last 30 years because we are under stress all the time next one so now we know most of the cases we are dealing they are of a clinical failure not resistance so if it is clinical failure what are the causes of clinical failure is a patient factor is a pharmacological factors or it is doctor factors so we found out there are many factors but the patient factor is one of the thing is a compliance and adherence cost drug factor is the quality of the drug and our doctors including me you all everybody is we do not have much time for counseling to the patient so lack of counseling so these are the very important factor are responsible for clinical failure next slide please then we said are there any other factors then we started studying uh, next one what we call with the tinea is acute or chronic then we saw the literature journal of american academy and we found the humoral immunity which is produced by body to fungus is not enough to eradicate fungus what we need is cellular immunity i think probably i'm little bit diverting that is the same thing they are now thinking of covid 19 antibodies are not produce enough antibody probably they are, we are dealing with the cellular immunity similarly in the fungus they realize we are dealing with the cellular immunity and one cellular immunity is required is a chronic disease like a tb we go for a montu test montu test indicate strongly positive good cellular immunity like that there is trichophytic test next slide please so the disease now it is proved is a chronic disease so this is another third factor already mentioned there are many pre n number of preparations they call is a combination of multiple drugs one of the steroid so all of us we know steroid should not be used at all we have to fight we should raise a war against using steroid next one next one yeah we should not use steroid at all because we have got better drug like lalicanozol sertraconazol or ibuprofenozol which have both action that is anti inflammatory and anti fungal so you we don't need steroid so please do not use steroid at all train your patient not to use steroid next slide please next one these are about steroid yeah yeah keep that first okay if you look at this patient comes the inflammation or the dermatosis of the face what you will think if you ask any dermatologist about 3 4 year before even dermatologist would have been perplexed but today next slide please yeah yeah but if you see today whatever the clinical pictures we are seeing is called modified steroid modified lesions it is very difficult to clinically diagnose this is a fungal so we have to take help of mycologists or lab and this is a scraping is taken the scraping shows long mycelium here are the mycelium is a diagnostic of tinea infection next one so we we is a clinical picture today is not enough to diagnose of course 80% we can diagnose but we need mycological check up culture and sensitivity and in addition to that next one 
and now is available for the research purpose is a PCR. So all these tests are available. At least Mumbai, all these tests are available. So if you are in doubt, please get this test done. Next one. So we need then treatment. Why patients are getting the treatment failure? So we started working and we found inappropriate doses, suboptimal doses, interruption therapy. Now we know this disease is a chronic disease. So any chronic infection, interruption therapy is a mother of clinical failure and resistance. For example, you know why you are getting MDR TB? Dot therapy. That is interesting therapy. You alternated anti TB. That is the main cause. I remember I said this will create problem. This will have MDR TB. I'm talking about 12 years before. But of course, people realize later. So interruption therapy like giving turbina for two weeks, gap of two weeks. Giving itraconazole two weeks, gap of two weeks. Giving fluconazole once in a week, twice in a week. This is called interruption therapy. So interruption therapy has got no role in any chronic infection. It can be TB, it can be systemic fungal infection or any chronic disease. Then of course the source, there are many and lack of proper counseling. These are the main reason for treatment failure, what we call clinical failure. Next one. Yeah, so we, we thought, let us study this, why this is happening. All because I was dealing with the dermatologist, they used to say, sir, there is no proper solution. So we started working. We studied 100 patients together where itraconazole was given 100 mg BID minimum for six weeks. Some patients we extended three months with the local application of ebirconazole. Out of this 100, 30 patients have taken multiple antifungal systemic drugs or the combination of the drugs. But afterward, we found 82% of the patients showed complete remission, 82%. There are no relapse, no recurrence. 18% showed partial response. When we saw the partial response, 18%, we said, why this is happening? And then you found 16% of the patients, they did not have good adherence and good compliance. So adherence and compliance. 2% were patients on immunosuppressed drug, like they had rheumatoid arthritis, they were on prednisolone and methotrexate. So then we followed the patient for one year and we found that the what is important is the adherence and the compliance. And to achieve this adherence and the compliance, what we need is a counseling. And for counseling, we need to give a time to the patient. If a doctor do not have time for counseling, I don't think you can get the results. Then after doing etraconazole, we said other drugs also can work. So we started terbinafin. Terbinafin also works similarly. Then we started fluconazole, and fluconazole also work wonderfully. So you know, then we got the solution. What was happening is the counseling, adherence, compliance, and the period. Period is minimum six weeks, not two weeks, three weeks. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. And if you see this slide, we give this, this paper to each and every patient that once you start medicine, see that you have to take for six weeks to three months. Do not apply any soap in the affected area. All family members who are affected should be treated at the same time. Whatever the clothes you are wearing, it should be washed in hot water and ironed properly. And if you see the last line, avoid abuse of steroid. No, do not use steroid at all. So this counseling has given, we'll see the result. Yeah, next one. See the result of the patient. There was no recurrence, no relapse. Please go ahead. Shailendra, go ahead. Before after, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Yeah, please go ahead fast. This is before or after. Yeah, so we, we found it was a good result. You know why good result? Because of the counseling, adherence, and this. Then we started, we said, no, the adherence and the counseling is important. We started looking for international literature. And we were not surprised. International literature also say the most important factor is poor adherence to the treatment. Of course, there are so many, but poor adherence was the main cause in almost 80% of the clinical failure. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And then the literature started coming. This is one of the literature for Indian dermatology that whatever it is prescribed in the described in the book is not enough. We have to give treatment for the longer period. That is six to eight weeks. I was happy. I was a poor person. We started this minimum period is six to eight weeks. It can be even three months. So I was happy. The literature started coming in, in, in the journal. Next one. Next one. Yeah, this is another next one. Shows sometimes you have to give six months in a few cases. Next slide. So now we know that the counseling, adherence, and compliance is very important. Period is important, and we can give long time. So now the question comes out practice is topical treatment is enough, or we have to go the combination of topical plus system. So all of us, we know if there are one or two small lesions, topical treatment is definitely useful. Next one, but the lesions are more than two, they are large in size, then we need to combine with the systemic drugs. Before going for systemic, another question is often asked, which local antifungal should be used? If you ask me, Whatever the antifungal topical agents are available, all are effective. It can be cotrimazole, it can be myconazole, or it can be laliconazole, it can be serticonazole. So you can use your own choice. Don't worry, they are effective. Next slide, please. So then, what about the systemic drug? Which, yeah. When you are going to use the systemic drug, the question is asked, which most effective the systemic drug? Next one. Next slide, please. Yeah, yeah, next slide. Because there are many systemic drugs. Turbinopin is there. Yeah, can you keep that turbinopin is there? One slide, yeah. Turbinopin, itraconazole, fluconazole, grisofulvin, oriconazole, many are there. So now the question is which we should use it. Next slide, please. Yeah, so before going for which should we use, the question, another question comes, which is oftenly many colleagues of mine, in spite of last four years, continues my lecture. They are writing combination. If you see this prescription, what this doctor has given, turbinafin, fluconazole, and grisofin. Three drugs. Do you think these three drugs anybody will take six to eight weeks? I'm sorry to say that. They will take three or four days and they will stop it. Adherence, compliance, the cause, and taking too many drugs, do you think you will accept? No. And our experience, if you have seen that clinical trial, single drug is enough. No need of combination of any drugs. Many people must be talking, but I'm giving you assurance Single drug is in a proper doses, proper duration, with the proper counseling, adherence, and the compliance. I'm sure you'll get good result. Next one. This is another friend of mine, colleague of mine, writing multiple systemic antifungal drug. So again, again, I'm repeating: no need of combination of antifungal drug. Next one. So, if the single drug is, yeah, is the problem. Next, next, next. Please go next. Yeah, if you see this, if you use a combination of many drugs, there will be increased number of tablets, 
increased toxicity, increased drug drug interaction, increased cost, and adherence compliance will be definitely hampered. So do not use many antifungal or combination of antifungal unnecessary. Next one. Yeah, next, go next. Yeah, next one. Yeah. Next one. Next, yeah, yeah, in the special population, next one in children. Yeah, in the children, yeah, keep one slide, yeah. In if the children get tinea, which drug you will prefer? That is the question very often asked. We can use terbinafin and fluconazole. Both, both are safe. If you give fluconazole, give three to five milligram per kg per day. Terbinafin goes by the weight. Twenty kg less than twenty, sixty two point five. More than less than forty, one twenty five. More than forty, two fifty. So remember these doses. Next slide, please. So you can use both fluconazole and terbinafine in children. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is the another study internationally. It shows fluconazole is very safe in lactating mother and children both. So you don't worry about using fluconazole in children. Next one. Next slide, please. Yeah, then antifungal choice in pregnancy. See, terbinafin is a very safe drug, but the dictum in the first trimester, better not to use any systemic drugs. Some people say in vaginal candidiasis, you can use fluconazole, but fluconazole should only single dose. It should not be more than 150 milligrams. Once, one dose, single dose, but terbinafine is the drug of choice, I'll use in second and third trimester, but first trimester, definitely I will avoid. Next one. Then coming to newer antifungal, like oriconazole, echinocandine, posoconazole, capsopongine, there are many new antifungals. So whether we should use or not, many doctors are writing, but let me tell you, all these are useful in a systemic, systemic mycosis, like cryptococcosis, mucormycosis, toxidomycosis, not for a dermatophytosis. There are no trial, there is one trial for oriconazole, but that is in vitro. The vitro and vivo actually discrepancy is 60%. So don't use this because these are very expensive also. And friend of mine who is a dermatologist and working as a mycologist for Indonesia, she was here in Pune, our national conference, and she made it very clear, Oriconola has got good concentration in serum, but not in the stratum corneum. It's a very toxic drug, very expensive drugs, so oriconol is not a drug for dermatophytosis. So please do not use these drugs for dermatophytosis and waste your time, money and everything. Next one. This is another slide shows these newer antifungal are useful for candidiasis, aspergillosis and fusidosis. Next slide please. Next one. This is an anecdote. So, which systemic antifungal you would like to prescribe? Because now you'll ask me, sir, you are saying itraconazole is effective, fluconazole is effective, terbinafine effective. Which we should use it? Next one. So, we started working. So, we, we, we let down the criteria. The drug should be effective or potent. Secondly, it should be safe. Thirdly, it should be cost effective. Fourthly, it should be quality of the drug. Fifth, it should be used long term. Seventh, it should be have minimum in drug interaction. Convenient to treat. So there are many criteria we laid down and we started comparing the drug. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next, next slide. Then we found fluconazole is drug of choice because there are many reasons. Number one, 
fluconazole can penetrate in any tissue. It can penetrate CNS or cryptococcal meningitis. It can penetrate pleural cavity. It can penetrate liver. It can go in any tissue. And its concentration is maximum in stratum corneum. Next one. Next one. And these drugs can be used in any type of movies. Absorption is very good. It doesn't need whether you have to take before food, after food, and is easy to take because single uh, is a single dose. Next one, and hardly any drug drug interaction. Next one, then we started we started looking for the international studies, and we found. The fluconazole can be used in tinea pedis, corporis, versicolor, or even onychomycosis. Next one. Then we started comparing with the itraconazole. Next one. And we found that his efficacy, his absorption, his availability. For example, you talk of itraconazole, it is a 99.5% is plasma protein bound, but fluconazole only 12%. Bioavailability of fluconazole is 90%, but itraconazole is only 55%. Next one. Yeah, next one. Please go past. Yeah, then this is a tissue penetration. I mentioned that it has got 40 times more penetration of uh, tissue penetration of fluconazole compared to itraconazole and terbinafine. Next one. Next one. Yeah, it's a very high concentration in stratum corneum. Next one. Yeah, it has compared with the itraconazole, 50 milligram and 100 milligram fluconazole with 100 milligram itraconazole and found that a fluconazole is better. Next one. Next one, next one. Yeah, this is onychomycosis. Next one. Next slide. Yeah, advantage of fluconazole. Next one. Comparison with terbinafine. Next one. Same thing. Again, the, this drug is fluconazole is more active. Terbinafine is poorly active. Next one. Next one. Same thing about the availability of the drugs. 90% fluconazole, 70% terbinafine. Next one. Next one is concentration. Same thing like uh, what we mentioned about the itraconazole. Next one. Next one. Next one. So we found fluconazole is better than Itraconazole and terbinafine. These are the international study. These are not my study. The compliance. Next one. And compliance also because fluconazole you have to give only once. Terbinafine 250 BD. Itraconazole 100 mg BID. So we give once. Definitely the compliance is better. Next one. Safety comparison. The side effects. Next one. The side effects if you see fluconazole has got less side effects compared to itraconazole and terbinafine. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next, 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 next. Yeah, this is a study from Dr. Kabir Sardana. I am very happy with him because he is doing a lot of studies and he is in Delhi, dermatologist. He found so according to his studies, when terbinafine and itraconazole fail, fluconazole work. So it's very clear. Next one. Next one. Next slide, please. Of course, this is the, his studies again. The concentration of fluconazole is far, far better in state of corneum compared to itraconazole and terbinafine. Next one. Next one. So now I'll ask you, I'll ask all of you which drug you will prefer when you take the characteristics like efficacy of the drug or potency of the drug, safety of the drug, the cost of the drug, minimum drug drug interaction, long term use, 
and the quality of the drugs. Now, can you tell me which drug you prefer? Of course, if you go for all these criteria, I prefer fluconazole. Next slide, please. And you will be surprised why I write Zocon. You know, Zocon or FBC is known for its quality. So remember, when you write any fluconazole, there is called poly. Uh, this uh, uh, what is called is yeah uh, is a uh, is when they produce the drugs, they require what is called anhydrous drugs. There are polymer. I have forgotten. Sorry. Sometimes this happen. You get this. That is type one, type two, and type three. Type one and three, they are hydrous form. Type two, they are anhydrous form. And FBC has got the technology that they come out with anhydrous form. So when you write full cause or ask any company you write, first confirm this is anhydrous form. If it is non anhydrous form, quality is not good. That's why if you see the expiry date of Zocon is very long, three years compared to any other preparation. So please look for the expiry date and what is the form. So take home message is very simple. Now we have solution for tinea corporis and the cruris. It is treatable condition. What you need, itraconazole, terbinafine, gluconazole or grisofulvine. Single drugs are effective. Fluconazole should be given daily 100 milli, 150 milligram for six to eight weeks, not once in a week, not twice in a week, or thrice a week. That's not going to work. Turbinafine should be 250 milligram DID, not 500 milligram OD. And it has to be long term, six to three weeks. Adherence, compliance is must, so we need patient to counsel. And another take home message preserve all this drug by using proper doses, proper adherence, proper duration. And now you must have realized most of the cases what we see, they are cases of clinical failure rather than register. So what is the last take home message? Counseling, compliance and adherence. And if you follow this with the proper duration of six to weeks, I'm sure you'll be able to manage your patients. I remember I was giving a talk at the Varanasi. So one of the doctor, Dr. Akbar, I remember, he said, Sir, in, I am a general practitioner, but I put up the board specialist in fungal infection. I said, how do you, how do you put that word, uh, board? He said, Sir, I'll tell you, any patient come to my clinic of fungus, I see whether he can afford to buy medicine for six to eight weeks. He can afford to buy, I take that patient. Other patient, I tell, I cannot treat. And by doing that, now I started getting a lot of patients coming back from dermatologists. So you know, solution is very simple. We have to practice it. I think, is there in, in another slide, Shailendra? Okay, yeah, now we have some questions. Proposed. Yes, sir. Yeah, there are a lot of questions, sir. Okay, okay, yeah. The, so I'll go. summarize, uh, most of the yeah. questions are like, like yeah. Dr. Nisa from Airoli, all yeah. other doctor from Hyderabad, Bhopal, all are like summary saying that yeah. while treating tinea corporis or tinea chloris, yeah. uh, most of the time they use drugs like hydroconazole or terbinafine for weeks. Yeah. But once the therapy is stopped, after few weeks itself, it mm. comes out again. Yeah. So there is a relapse. So yeah. they want to understand how long, in such cases, how long do you recommend? And which drug you recommend and why? Yeah, you know, this is a very important question. In fact, this is the main question. And that's how, if, if uh, I have done that study of compliance, adherence, the duration. Use any drug 
body if you give with the proper doses proper compliance minimum 6 weeks if you give 2 weeks they will feel better they will stop it they will come back you know why is the reason because many people apply steroid when they apply steroid the fungus invasion is deeper than stratum corneum if it is in the stratum corneum two or three weeks is enough but when they go deeper the treatment has to be 6 to 8 weeks so you give for 6 to 8 weeks with the proper counseling proper doses you will get a result i hope this is good enough answer is good enough or because the disease now is become chronic it has not remain acute that the treatment only for 2 weeks is enough is not enough you have to give minimum 6 to 8 weeks sometimes you have to continue for 3 months in few cases you have continue for 3 months so there are patients who doctors are treating for last 2 years yeah and they face the same kind of problem that once they stop uh, using those molecules they again get infected so for such cases who are chronic even have become chronic how yeah. long do you think the treatment should go and what is the drug of your choice see first let me tell you when you start treatment they are responding if they are not resistance they are clinical failure because they are responding but they are responding for two weeks and again they are coming responding again they are coming so is a clinical failure and even you are treating for two years i'm sure at a time continuously they have not taken the treatment for 6 to 8 weeks they have taken for 2 weeks 3 weeks and they have stopped it so please this is i learned from my hiv counseling hiv adherence what is adherence what is compliance we are learned by hiv in hiv even they miss one day they get multiplication of uh, viruses so their adherence required is very hard so if you follow adherence and the compliance again i'm saying those patients who are coming for two years to you follow this i'm sure you'll get a result sir you are saying uh, long term treatment of fluconazole with even one year or that is is actually recommended now there are cases when you know this is a covid 19 situation post impact yeah doctors are asking Yeah. That you know, people who have lost jobs, people will have less of salary. Then how long you think that you know how economically people will be burdened with this untreatable condition called dermatophytosis or tinea? Mm, I entirely agree because as I mentioned, when you think of the factor, one is the drug has to be effective and drug has to be safe. But the third factor, which is the cost. and today with the epidemics of the covid 19 the cost has become very important factor so when you think of the cost you think terbinafen itraconazole and compare with the fluconazole fluconazole in fact i'm working for last 4 years that we need the drug which is effective which is safe and it has to be cost effective the hiv has stopped me because 80% of the hiv patients are from the poor socio economic group so we have to learn to give important to the cost effective sometime four or five members are affected so by giving cost effective drug like fluconazole which cheaper than terbinafen itraconazole definitely it will give better compliance and adherence and patient will be very happy because i am seeing some of the specialists are prescribing oriconazole i get very much upset the drug is not useful drug is very expensive more side effects why you are writing i just do not understand i think when you are prescribing our aim should be very straight give effective safe and the cost effective drug and today in the epidemics of covid everything has to be related to the cost it has to be what is called economy front not only health front but the economy front the doctors wants to know 
that what is the choice of drug for patient who are hypertensive and diabetics yeah it's a very nice question because almost they say 6% in our country is diabetic and many patient they after 50 many patient they get hypertension so is a very good uh, thing for example etraconazole etraconazole is not a good drug because etraconazole has got lot of drug drug interaction so you should not be use those patient who are anti diabetic and anti hypertension terbinafine you can use it fluconazole you can use it both drug you can use it fluconazole and terbinafine terbinafine is only contraindicated in drug drug interaction is anti psychotic drugs if the patient is on the anti psychotic drugs please do not use terbinafine their drug of choice will be fluconazole a lot of doctors are asking about etraconazole is promoting pulse therapy and if that fails also what do you recommend and what is pulse therapy now you, you saw the what is the basic for tinea has become the chronic infection and any chronic infection interruption therapy doesn't work so please do not use interruption therapy like alternate day once in a week twice a week because many colleague of mine dermatologists they said fluconazole doesn't work and it's not given in the book I always tell them fluconazole has to be given with daily continuously no interruption therapy no alternate day no twice a week so etraconazole if you use alternate day interruption therapy sorry it is not going to work please do not use that sir so they also wants to understand that even if patients who are using luliconazole and after a month uh, patient stop using luliconazole then what should we do no it has to be combination of local application and systemic therapy the systemic therapy has to go for 6 to 8 weeks and once the lesion subside we continue topical 2 weeks after the lesions are subsided so you have to continue 2 weeks even the lesion subside people are also looking for answers for increasing the immunity of skin yeah <laughs> yeah that's very good question because that's why i showed what we learn basically during our medical curriculum that the host immunity is very important now in the covid also we know the patients are getting mild symptom moderate because their immunity is good to so increase the immunity basically number one the mental what is called mentally you have to be very stable food rest diet and yoga yoga is very important so if you follow this not 10 days 15 days minimum you have to follow for 6 months to 9 months then immunity goes up so having skin immunity increase it have to be whole immunity has to be increased so again i am repeating proper rest mental rest proper diet and yoga and exercise which is all of us we know since the human being has been born but many of us we are so much busy with our curriculum or activity we forget these basic things like one of my friend arthroscopic dr anand joshi i was just going through his one of his uh, uh, what is called one of his lecture so he has mentioned there his father told him the medical practice and the sport has to go together so even he is 65 he has not stopped sports he said exercise and medical practice has to be together to increase your so people are asking uh, for long term therapy yeah uh, dr mohammad from uh, farukabad yeah three months therapy of etraconazole completed a patient and during the therapy patient uh-huh. have swollen face as well as swollen legs yes correct. why it is so and what should we do in such patients 
Yeah, you are absolutely right. One of the side effects of etraconazole, edema of the feet, edema of the face. In fact, etraconazole increases the QT interval. So, any patient is hypertensive, cardiac problem, please do not use etraconazole. Patient may go into cardiac failure. So, don't use etraconazole. You are lucky the patient has gone... Of course, he is developing edema, means he is going to cardiac failure. So, history of cardiac element is very important before writing it traconazole. That's why I say use terminophene and fluconazole instead of itraconazole. Dr. R.K. Sarma from uh, Uttar Pradesh is asking, newborn yeah. under one year, what should we prefer, sir? Pardon? One year? Newborn under one year, what should you prefer, sir? No, no, no. Can you repeat? Uh, Dr. R.K. Sarma from Uttar Pradesh is asking newborn cases less uh, than a year. What should you yeah. prefer? Yeah, it has to be fluconazole. Uh, if you remember, I showed on the slide where fluconazole is an international study. Fluconazole is very safe in newborn and even lactating mother. Both. You can use fluconazole. But the dose should be 3 to 5 mg kg per day. Sir, uh, Dr. Uh, Chiru Broto Dotto from Jamshedpur is asking role of vitamin E, especially in fungal infection or bacterial infection or skin lesions. See, vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin D, all vitamin E has got its own role. But in fungal infection, if you use proper doses, proper duration, all this may act as an additional. I will not use it, but it may be useful for additional anything, increase the immunity, we need all vitamins. So if there is any deficiency of the vitamins, you have to add. Dr. Virendra from Bombay is asking, can we use two topical agents together? See, scientifically two agents can be combined, but there is no need, when we don't need, why you want to combine? Scientifically, you can combine. Right. So this is the most often question that once again you tell us the regime for treating the tinea recurrent cases in terms of drug and dose both. Okay. See, again from my last four years experience, I would like to Repeat, the drug of choice is fluconazole because it's a effective drug, is a safe drug. Because of course, you will ask everybody, ask all dermatologists, they keep on asking me, sir, where it is given in the book? Because of the HIV, there are many treatments you are practicing which is not given in the book. So we have to go, what they call is beyond the book. Because book takes about 10 years to write and then it goes. So this I picked up from my HIV experience by giving fluconazole daily 150 milligram for minimum 6 to 8 weeks with a good counseling and adherence. It works well. Now you will ask me 150 mg giving for 3 months. Is it not toxic? No, let me tell you. In cryptococcal meningitis we are used 1200 milligram of fluconazole IV for three weeks and maintenance dose 400 milligram daily for nine months. So you use fluconazole in very large doses, there are hardly any side effects. So doctors are asking that initial one week of the treatment, what is your choice of uh, anti itching or anti prurotic drug should we use in this period of time? Steroids. Yeah. See, it has to be anti histamine tablets initially, first one or two weeks. Then they don't require anti tablet. We give moisturizer. You can give moisturizer locally to prevent the itching, but no steroids. Right, sir. You can sum up, sir. It's, all questions are covered. So we have received 1,336 1, questions. Oh, so you can understand uh, 1,336 questions cannot be answered.
Yeah, I know, but most of the practical difficulties. The summary, difficulties summary, I have taken. The summary, I have taken. So shall I uh, uh, mention about the thanks? Uh, so one more question. Yeah. Uh, one of the doctor is asking uh, that uh, you are proposing a daily dose of fluconazole 150 mg. Yes. So what is the safety profile of it? Yeah, it's a very good question. See, 150 mg given for six six weeks to three months, it is very safe. But you ask good question. We usually get their CBC, LFT, and serum creatine. This test done at the base level. And the patient complain in the loss of appetite, we repeat. Otherwise, repeat after three weeks or repeat after three months. So sir, basically, yeah. If, sir, since you have mentioned LFT, one doctor, Dr. A.K. Banerjee from Bilaspur is asking, huh. in hepatic cases, which antifungal should be used? Yeah, hepatic cases, you can use fluconazole is very good drugs and you can use your terbinafine. But you have to monitor LFT if you are using terbinafine. So then there is no role of steroid in treating dermatophytosis? And if at all, what is then when? You know, when, see why they get itching, that is the first thing. They get itching because of there is liberation of cytokines, interleukin. The interleukins are responsible for the itching. So ideally giving system, if the lesions are very extensive and the itching is intractable, we can give steroid for seven to 10 days, but it should not be made practice. That's why I'm worried. Because few cases, intractable itching gives steroid, it works. But systemic steroid, not local steroids. But the cases should be very few. You have to select those cases. Don't make as a habit. If you make a habit, again we are creating problem. Right, sir. Shailendra, any other question is left? More or less, all our questions are covered, sir. That is the gist of all the questions that is being asked. Oh, okay. now, the now we have received 1,455 questions. Yeah, please, please keep it on the record. Please keep it on the record, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And send it to me on the email. So if anything is missing, we can contact all these doctors on the email. You can contact. I'll answer this question. Huh? And so let me thank. FDC, Mr. Anand Basu, Shailendra, and Prashant, no technical person, Prashant. No? Yes, sir, Prashant. Prashant, thank you, and all of you, thank you for allowing me to share my experience. And I'm waiting some of the things, the suggestion from you, so I can also learn. Thank you, thank you.